Michelle on Q13 Fox News this morning. If you're still putting together your Thanksgiving menu, don't worry about it. Jill Sharp with thelakekitchen.com. She's uh, joining us with some great uh, recipes and things you can do for tomorrow's big meal. So, Jill, good to see you once again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, the idea behind this is to get some really great classics, but we're going to slim them down a little bit without compromising flavor. So, in a, in a comparison here, we have sweet potatoes. So, we were talking earlier about how most sweet potato recipes contain a lot of brown sugar, yep. a lot of butter, and a lot of marshmallows. Yeah. Well, here what we're doing, my sweet potatoes here, we have um, apples and sweet potatoes. Mine only contains 10.4 grams of fat. The normal kind contains 304 grams, or excuse me, of sugar. Uh -huh. the, th these ones contain 304 grams of processed sugar. Whoa. That's equivalent of eating this whole plate of cookies, which is 84 and oh a half cookies. So we are saving a ton of sugar. So the apples provide some of the natural sweetness in addition to sweet potatoes. Exactly, sweet too, exactly. Right? So what yeah. I did was take, I have some apples here, peel them, and some sweet potatoes, peeled those, cut them up, and put them in a pot. Let them simmer in yeah. um, a little bit of chicken broth just to get them nice and mushy, and then what you do is give them a little whirl and then we're gonna pop in some really great flavorings and this is where when you when you think of sweet potatoes you think of that cinnamony mm -hmm. you know warm spices kind so we savory, have yeah. yep cinnamon and ginger a little ground ginger and nutmeg pop that in there and just give that a whirl so as you can see we've added no extra sugar thus far what you do you you spin that around, it gets a nice puree, and you can see what we have here. So what I did is, to give it adults kind of like a little bit more fancy style, mm -hmm. so I just caramelized some shallots. Just put a little olive oil in a pan. We only use a teaspoon of olive oil, and that's the whole, any of the oil that's in this whole recipe. And then I drizzled it with a little bit of honey. So what we're gonna do is just take about a teaspoon of honey, and this adds a nice little sweet note on top when you wow. go into, to bite into this delicious dish. And then top it with a little little bit of blue cheese and you have yourself a delicious gourmet recipe. So I noticed that you brought a, yes. fer a Ferndale size spoon for me. Yes. I'm slide well, on this it's slice. so good for you. You can have a huge serving. A huge so, bite. Yes. so I'm going to take a bite of this and take us to step two. Okay. Well, let me, let, don't forget, we need some mm. wine, wine with it. And one of the great things about really good. using, having wine versus your, you know, buttered rum or your, you know, eggnogs, those type of things, they have up to about 400 calories for one drink. Wow. Where you could have a glass of wine, and this actually, this Cabernet Sauvignon from Chateau Saint Michel, it's the Canoe Ridge. The spicy notes pair really well with the spicy um, notes of our sweet potatoes. So okay. that's a great match, and you're saving about 350 calories per drink. So let's move on here. We have our sausage stuffing, and a lot of times people think, oh, stuffing, you know, not so bad, except for it is loaded. So a normal sausage stuffing has 170 grams of fat. Wow. And so that's a huge amount. But it amount. makes your coat shiny. It does. It does. <laughs> yes. Among other things. That's like equivalent to eating two and a half cheese pizzas. Is that right? Two, two and, and a half, half cheese pizzas. pizzas. Really? Yes. Yes. Instead, you can have mine and that's five times more fat. That's amazing. It, so it what's is. in there that, that gives it the flavor then? So this is, yeah, let me show you exactly what we're doing. So we're not compromising flavor because we're still using a sausage, but we're using a light chicken sausage. Okay. And it's an Italian sausage, so it has some great flavors in it. Uh, what I did is I rendered this down, cooked it up nicely, and then we're adding some really great depth of flavor with roasted vegetables. So I took a little bit of onion, and we have butternut squash here to add some really nice color, and fennel. So fennel is a really great kind of anise flavor. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you just pop these in your oven about 425 for about 30 minutes or so until they're nice and tender. Get all those guys in there and then just pop them in your bowl. And now it's time to add, layer the flavors on. So we're going to add some chicken broth. And as you're adding that, I want to point this out. Miguel, if you could get a shot of this. This thing here is called a sill pad, I think. Yes. My wife yep, has a sill pad. It's a silicon uh, pad. She uses it to bake cookies and do all kinds of stuff, roast vegetables. Uh -huh. It is incredible. Nonstick. Yes. Beautiful yes. way to, to I do use that. it all the time. Yeah. yeah. You could use parchment if you needed to, but Good these investment. clean right up. Yep. Okay. So then we're going to do a little bit of chopped parsley, some chopped thyme, and finish off with some chopped sage, and a little pinch of garlic powder. A little allspice, and that adds kind of a nice little mm -hmm. note behind it, and some cranberries. We need a little bit of sweetness in there. So you stir that all around, and then you add your breadcrumbs, or your bread cubes. And mm -hmm. what I did is I just took oat nut bread. So okay. we're using not just your 
you know, white bleached flour bread. And did we'll you toast it. that yourself? I did. You know what? It's super, super simple. What you do is you just take a bread, cut it into cubes, pop it in your oven. You can roast it right along with these guys. Just put it in for about seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You're ready to go. So you just mix all that together. And what you come up is with this beautiful dish here. And we also we have a great wine to go with it. It's a Roica wine. It's a Riesling. It's a mm -hmm. dry Riesling from Chateau St. Michel. And it really complements the flavors, the nice sweetness of the cranberries. Before I take this, uh, to take this bite, Jill, how, sometimes I struggle with, sometimes it's too dry, sometimes it's too moist. Uh -huh. How do you balance that before you put it in to bake? Well, you know, what you want to do is, and once you get this all mixed together, you want to see, you don't want things mm. to be, you know, too too moist and falling apart. So if that's the case, I'd add a few more breadcrumbs. Okay. Um, but it, you don't also don't want it to be, you know, a piece of toast. So you want to gauge it back and forth. And after it's done cooking, you can always try it. Add a little chicken broth on top at the very end okay. if you need it to get a little bit more moist. That's really good. The vegetables, the roasted vegetables are just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank Happy you very much. Happy Thanksgiving to yes. you, Jill. Okay, we're posting.